Hi, I'm Chewy Fangirl, I fangirl over and you just listen. Welcome to 2014, people. My New Year's resolution was to keep as little cameos as possible unless needed for a special occasion. So, for this review, I'm doing all by myself. All along with the voices inside my head. I've been invited to a slumber party with three of my best friends, and for this slumber party, we're going to watch a movie, a really awesome chick flick. Oh boy, I hope it's Mean Girls. Well, we're not watching Mean Girls. Oh boy, I hope it's Sucker Punch. We're not watching that film either. Okay, so then what are we watching? We're watching Bratz Genie Magic. A Bratz movie. You're serious. Oh my god, I love the Bratz. Okay, so when I was a kid, there was two major doll franchises, Bratz and Barbie. Sure, there were other dolls around, such as My Scene and Polly Pocket, but I wasn't crazy about them. However, I have my Barbie and Bratz collection, I was more of a Bratz fan because of its consistency. See, Bratz and Barbie were two polar opposites when it came to the movie franchise. Both of them had dozens of movies, however, Barbie never kept a consistent plot. Hell, we never saw Barbie as herself. In The Nutcracker, it was Clara. In Swan Lake, it was Audit. In Rapunzel, it was, well, Rapunzel. We never got to see Barbie as herself, unless you count the Barbie Diaries or the New Generation films, which I haven't seen but I've looked up. Barbie even had a book series that she starred in as herself, but never had a constant plot, other than she was dating or married to Ken and had three sisters, Stacy, Kelly, and Skipper. She would be a mermaid princess in one story, but in another story, Barbie is a human babysitter. How the hell does that make any sense? However, on the Bratz hand, Bratz always had the same characters when it came to the movies and TV show. There was a smart Yasmin, clumsy Chloe, stereotypical Sasha, and Jade who appealed to the targeted audience. We always knew that they worked in a fashion magazine and were rock stars. Sounds silly and unrealistic, yes, but at least we weren't constantly confused like we were when it came to the Barbie movies. And you could argue there are alternate versions of the Bratz, such as the kids and babies, but it still applies to the same protagonist. I think of it more of a prequel rather than a story messing with my head. When I was growing up, there were only three Bratz movies. Rock Angels, Genie Magic, and Forever Diamonds. There was also the animated Bratz movie, but I don't count that one because the series was never brought up again after the movie was released. And there was also the Bratz Babies movie, the first one, but I never cared for the Bratz Babies franchise. And don't get me started in the live action film in 2007. So just one question, why am I watching the second of the three that I grew up and not start with Rock Angels, the first movie? Come on, Chibi Fangirl, we're not brainless like the first movie thinks we are. Good point. I look back at these films I grew up with as a critic, and, and out of the three, this one's the best, and I consider it to be one of my favorite animated movies to this day. Rock Angels and Forever Diamonds might have been cool when I was a kid, but looking back at them, they are bland and pointless. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Bratz Genie Magic. Our story opens up with a Bratz character we've never seen before. She's running from a bunch of angry looking men. The girl stumbles into a Bratz, um, strip show. Okay, I say this because in Rock Angels you see them with instruments and actually playing them. But after that movie you see them in the costumes but not really doing anything other than provocatively dancing. Let me just slow down this clip because it doesn't look very child friendly. feel sickened, don't you? I know how you feel. After the concert, the girl runs backstage. I find this funny how only the manager is reacting normally, but not the brats themselves. What if this girl's a kidnapper? She, she doesn't seem to fit in with normal human terminology. For example, she's never seen a guitar before and, and doesn't react to slang very well. Hey, wicked shoes, sister! Huh? But my shoes are not evil. What, did this girl live with gorophobic parents? The manager is also chasing after her since she didn't pay her ticket. I knew she was some sort of criminal. However, the girl disappears and all that remains is glitter. We cut to our protagonist living in an average teenage world, watching zombie movies as it's raining outside. I've never seen any zombie movies and nor do I plan to, but this has to be a really bad movie just looking at it. Just look at how bad this guy's acting is. Jenny. Where'd you go? Oh my holy! No! 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 I award you the worst acting I have ever seen. 
The movie cuts to Chloe, who needs help with her geography test, because she suffers from no blonde woman would ever act like that syndrome. I forgot to mention that Chloe's the comedy relief, but isn't that funny at all. What are we going to do? This place is so beyond help. Our hopes, our dreams, everything shattered. <laughs> Chloe asks Yasmin for help, but Yasmin says she needs to study. You're right, Chloe. Studying is evil. That's probably why you failed your math test now, isn't it? No, I, I just didn't have my morning coffee. Sasha announces that she is going to audition to be a DJ for the worst radio station ever named, called b Hip Radio. Seriously, that just sounds ridiculous. Yasmin tells her to be careful because the town's going through a big storm. We cut to our obvious antagonists who are causing these storms. Their names are Zell and Khan. We also meet Sebastian who has the worst foreign accent I have ever heard. They found her. Have you located my daughter yet? I'm not sure what country he's from, but I'm pretty sure no accent sounds like that. He's looking for his runaway daughter named Katya. Zell and Khan tell Sebastian they are looking for Katya and send him away so that they can talk evil. However, Sebastian tells them if Katya leaves her bottle behind, she will grow weak. Wait, bottle? She looked 15. Wait, that's not a baby bottle. That's a genie bottle. Oh my god, Katya is a genie. I knew it. Katya sneaks into the Bratz High School and everyone seems a-okay with it. Seriously, no teachers call her in to see if she's really a student or not. Katya tells the Bratz that her father is part of some secret agent society and she ran away from home because her father is so strict. Jade's response is she gets to wear a cool uniform. Wow, that's an appropriate thing to say. Katya complains about her father and he won't even let her wear makeup. Oh, the humanity. I can't even afford makeup. How the hell do you think I feel? I live in <laughs> District 12. Some of the guards find Katya and the brats try to make a run for it. They enter a room and they see Katya has some strange ability. She's actually Spider-Man. So Katya explains that she is Spider-Man and a genie. In the next scene, the two gay boyfriends, Dylan and Bryce, appear to scare the girls. Chloe yells at them, telling them they should die. No, seriously. I wish you would totally croak! To croak is not only a noise made by frogs, but it could also mean to kill off. God, Chloe, that is harsh. So Katya really doesn't kill them, instead she turns them into frogs. Yasmin points out if Katya is really a genie, then how come Dylan and Bryce don't wish themselves back? But they do. Yasmin now bullies Katya. Katya then explains she's only allowed to grant one wish per person, but there are some rules. They cannot wish for a mass amount of wealth, eternal life, death upon others, or more wishes. And if you think genies grant three wishes, then you're dead wrong. Katya isn't allowed to have that privilege until she's 21. For some reason. I understand not giving alcohol to kids, but this is ridiculous. We also know that Katya's father was also a genie, but his bottle broke a long time ago, and now his powers are gone. Chloe has used up her wish and asked her friends if they would share with her. However, they have their own selfish plans. Yasmin wishes to save the poor animals out in the rain. Sasha wants to become a professional DJ. Jade wants to win in the heart of the actor who cannot act. We'll call him Steve. And, a and of course, Chloe wants to pass her test. Gee, I wish I could find a genie. That way I can win the heart of nostalgia kid. And we can get married and have lots of kids. You do realize genies don't exist. Psh, what are you talking about? Christian Eckler is a genie in a bottle. That's a metaphor for sex. No, I saw it with my own eyes. The girls go to town and Kachi uses her powers on random strangers who wish for very stupid things. The men find her and Kachi continues to run, disguising herself as a fortune teller. The brats squabble about their wish as they see the men kidnap her. Kachi then sees her father and tells him all about Earth, but he doesn't like it, her scandalous misadventures. Sebastian believes if a genie befriends a human, then a human will only respect them for their power and not for their friendship. Kachi then sulks in her room. The brats are still arguing about their wishes, and then this happens. Friends would let me have my wish to ace my test. Real friends? And we even shared our wishes with you! That's cold, Chloe! 
I'm so sorry. Oh, I wish I never said that. Which leads them to losing another wish, even though Chloe had wished for something else, and that's against the rules. Zell is asked to ask Katya if she can help her and Khan <laughs> with their project of destroying the weather, which leaves point one for the villains. But later, Katya overhears Zell and Khan <laughs> plans about taking over the world. Of course! Let me finish. The world's economy, not the world in general. That's too generic. Khan <laughs> then asks Zell to interrogate Katya's friends since they gotten her into trouble. He says if they know something about Katya's power, then he should kill off the brats. Wow, that's dark. Way you announce your plan to the protagonist. Smooth. Meanwhile, Yasmin and Chloe are studying for Chloe's geography test when the lights go out and, and one of Khan's <laughs> Henchmen kidnap both of them. Katya escapes from her bottle once again to tell Jade and Sasha that they're in trouble. They meet up instantly and Bryce also tags along since he has an awkward romantic feeling for Katya. The two remaining brats go to see Simon Cowell, I mean Byron Powell, who is a secret agent slash TV show host. Why is his secret agent skills never brought up in his first appearance in Rock Angels? I don't know. He gives the girls and Bryce some weapons to defend themselves as, as well as explain the antagonist's plans. Sorry, I didn't want to turn on the con alarm again. <laughs> Damn it, see what you made me do? The antagonists interrogate Yasmin and Chloe, but they refuse to give any information. So Zell is forced to use these truth patches on them. Khan <laughs> is left alone as Sebastian walks in on him. Khan <laughs> Shut up! The villain's crystal ball is showing Katya with the breath, smiling and laughing. Sebastian has never seen his little girl happy and feels sad for the way he treated her. He is then forced to work in his study where he normally always is, even though he doesn't know that Zell has put another evil device in there which will lock him there for eternity and eventually freeze him to death. Smart move. He wanders off somewhere. As the endless storm keeps going, Sasha wishes for an umbrella which uses up another wish. Katya shows Bryce, Sasha, and Jade her magic carpet, which can multiply. The girls fly off in the distance and hoping to stop the antagonist and save Chloe and Yasmin. Chloe and Yasmin eventually reveal the truth as they are sent into this machine that will make them brainless. Luckily, the others arrive in time, but Khan <laughs> has sent the henchmen to go after them. The friends split up. Katya and Bryce look for Chloe and Yasmin as Sasha and Jade fight off the henchmen. Zell really doesn't try to stop Katya, she lets her figure it out, and then she runs away. Things are starting to look bad until Bryce turns off the machine, releasing the girls. Chloe can now name all the countries and their capitals, so I guess that's a good thing. Khan <laughs> is forced to deal with the protagonist and, and threatens to break Katya's bottle, which means that she could lose her powers. Katya then asks what he wants, and Khan <laughs> says he wants him and Zell to live peacefully. Katya asks where her father is, but nobody really knows. The brats wish he was back in his study, thus locking him there and freezing him. However, they are unaware of that, thus using all their wishes. Chloe and Sasha are disappointed, but Jade points out that they should make their own dreams come true. Man, I was hoping that Nostalgia Critic and I can be a thing. The girls find out what they have done, and Bryce tries to tackle the villain, thus throwing Katya's bottle up in the air. Katya saves her bottle but notices it's too late to save her father. Thus she has to break her bottle in order to undo every wish she has ever granted. Katya is then reunited with her father as the villains are sent to jail thanks to Byron. Remember him? And Sebastian lets Katya have some more free will. Even though I nitpicked the hell out of this movie, I enjoy it. It tells a good story about how you need to work for your dreams instead of taking the easy way out. Sure, it may seem silly and the animation is really bad, but it's enjoyable for the kids as well as the adults. So that's my review. I hope you enjoy this. Hold on. You know there's a sequel to this movie, right? Sequel? How can a sequel make the story better? It's fine as a single movie. Hell, we don't even see Katya in Forever Diamonds, the movie after this one. Oh, just watch it. We can't save it for another episode? No, you're doing a Muppet film next. Fine. Our story starts with a thief in the desert who is stealing some sort of ring. She is successful and replaces the ring with a fake. Then we see the brats and Katya in some sort of fashion show in Morocco. Sebastian keeps pestering Katya about bringing this magic carpet to a museum, but she doesn't really tell him that she and the brats are going to use it for the fashion show. Meanwhile, on the runway, something goes terribly wrong. 
As Katri comes out on the flying carpet, the carpet goes out of control, taking her and the brats to some mysterious cave where they meet the thief. The thief is named Alia, who explains the secret of the carpet. Thou who wears the ring shall control the carpet. Katya then demands it back as some pimp strolls along, kidnapping Katya and almost leaving Alia, his companion, while the brats try to find him. The brats have no cell phone reception, and they wander around the desert, which feels like days. Meanwhile, on the carpet ride, Alia doesn't seem so fond of having Katya with her and the pimp named Charlo. Katya tricks Charlo into getting the ring back and throws it on the ground. I threw it on the ground! The carpet falls, leaving Charlo to find the ring himself. The brats finally receive a call from Sebastian saying that Katya is in grave danger. Charlo wants to find a mysterious lamp that's been locked away, and if Charlo finds it, Sebastian and Katya are doomed. The brats still stumble their way through the desert, where they find an area with water. However, the water isn't free. A woman is guarding it and says she only accepts trades for water. The girls explain the situation to the woman, who doesn't seem amused. She notices Sasha's cell phone and falls in love with it. She says she'll give the brats a camel and some water for the phone, but it's no deal since the girls need their cell phones, and they have nothing much to offer other than their bodies. What? I'm being logical here. The girls give in their cell phones and get two camels. However, Chloe isn't fond of the camels since they are a little, um, creepy. Sebastian tries to fly to Morocco as soon as he can, but there is a lot of traffic. Meanwhile, Charlotte is still looking for the ring as Alia and Katya have a talk. For once in a Bratz movie, we have the most tragic backstory I've ever seen. I'm serious. Alia says that Charlotte is always taking care of her. When Alia was young, she was poor and couldn't afford food. <laughs> hey, I know the feeling. One day for Alia's birthday, her father gave her this cup that he found. She didn't appreciate it at first, but knew that her parents couldn't afford really anything. Thus, she cherished the cup. One day, a man asked for the cup in exchange for food. Alia's father says it's up to his daughter. She refuses. That night, she overhears her parents talking. Her mother was so upset that Alia refused food. That night, they disappeared. She thinks her parents have abandoned her, which is why she wishes a wish from that mystic lamp mentioned earlier. Yeah, you didn't think brats could be so deep. You're crying, aren't you? Well, don't worry, there's more sorrowful scenes later in this movie. That's right, this is the most depressing Bratz film I have ever witnessed. Charlo finds the ring, which has a scorpion on it. Thus, he asks Alia to put it on, but she knows those creatures are poisonous. Charlo eventually gives in, hazing her, and flicks the scorpion away and killing it. Wow, now we have a parental abandonment, starvation, and animal cruelty. Doesn't get any better than this, doesn't it? Charlo takes Katya and leaves Alia there, feeling deserted once again. The brats are now on camels and wandering through the desert, as, as Jade asks are we there yet a bunch of times as Sasha makes the worst jokes ever. They run into Alia and they feel bad for her since there's no food or water around. She isn't fond of the brats' help but is willing to survive. Then we get the most awesome brats song as they stroll through the desert. Charlo and Katya finally reach the temple where the magic lamp is held. However, Charlo cannot find a way in. As the brats continue their journey, the ground seems to break apart, leaving Yasmin, Chloe, and Lumpy, their camel, inside a hole. Jade and Sasha try to get him out, even with the help of Alia. They can get Yasmin and Chloe out, but Lumpy is gone forever. Not Lumpy! He was my favorite character! Somehow, Charlo goes inside, dragging Katya along with him. There are countless booby traps that the two must overcome, even though Charlo doesn't really care if Katya survives. He just wants to sleep with her. The two reach the lamp, but Charlo cannot remove it from its stand. Oh well, I guess that trip was for nothing. Katya then blurts out she's from the genie family. Thus, Charlo demands her to remove the lamp, or else he'll rape her or something. I don't know, he seems intimidating, but not threatening. The brats arrive, and Katya removes the lamp as the brats and Alia play football with it. Alia then rubs the lamp and sends Sebastian. Katya sees him and bursts out crying because once all three wishes are used up, Katya will never see her father again. You may start crying now. Alia wishes to know the truth about her parents. It turns out her parents were murdered. Then she wishes to find out who killed them, and the murderer turns out to be Charlo. Alia is enraged, but Katya begs to save her father. So instead of wishing for vengeance, she wishes for Sebastian to be set free. You may start crying again. Oh my god, this is so morbid. Katya and Sebastian are reunited as the temple begins to collapse. 
The brass Alia, Katja, and Sebastian escape as the only desert jewels we see fall down from the cave as they closes in on Charlo. As the friends escape, we see the old woman from earlier, and Lumpy is back from the dead. Alia feels alone, but Katja and Sebastian welcome her to their family. This had to be the most heartwarming story I have ever witnessed in a long time. For a brass film, it's pretty dark. Not only that, but it's also a stronger story than the previous film. It is far better than Gene Magic. The film doesn't focus on cheesy girly jokes or fashion. It focuses on Alia's backstory and what danger seeks Katya and Sebastian. I recommend this film. It's similar to a Disney movie without without the spectacular animation. So that's it for this episode. So you're saying I'm watching a Muppet film for the next episode. Which Muppet movie in particular? Every straight girl's dream. Labyrinth. Oh. Oh my. Um. <clears throat> I'm gonna... Take a cold shower. I'm to be fangirl. I fangirl over you. Just listen. It's a good thing. Ain't nothing stopping us.